people of the interwebs. It's your favorite abandoned warehouse, Sarah here, with another car review. And today, I finally got my hands on a 2020 Toyota Supra. This is arguably one of the most talked about cars for the past year or two now, and for good and bad reasons. There's a lot of criticism against this car, and there's a lot of people that just flat out love it. But today, I'm gonna give you my thoughts and overall impression of this A90 Supra. The Mark V Supra received a lot of criticism online for the fact that it didn't look exactly like the FT1 concept car. I personally don't mind because almost no production car looks exactly like a concept car. And for good reason, a lot of concept cars look like fake toys. I think they did a great job at using design elements from the Mark IV Supra while using modern technology to make this car look like a Supra should look like in the year 2020. I never noticed until I got this car to do the review on it that there's actually little red stripes on the side of the LED elements in the headlights. I also appreciate the fact that there's two buttons inside the car that allow you to turn on just one side of the LED daytime running light because this car is manufactured in Europe. The VIN number starts with a W, not a J. And over there, it's common to find that feature in cars. So when you park it on the side of the street at nighttime, you can alert cars on the road that your vehicle is parked there. They did kind of screw up though with the placement of these sensors in the front bumper because it reminds me of nostrils on one of the pigs from Angry Birds. Aside from the launch edition, the Supra comes with these 19 inch forged monoblock wheels wrapped in 255-35 front, 275-35 rear Michelin Pilot Super Sports. There are four pot Brembo calipers up front, but only a one pot in the rear, and the base model actually gets a smaller diameter rotor than the upper two trim specs. Unfortunately, most of the vents on this car are fake, including the ones up here on the hood, the ones down here on the door, as well as the rear bumper. They totally make up for it though with the rest of the styling on the rear of this car. This thing has a nice ass and I am a big fan of these taillights because I am a light nerd and I like the color of the plastic that they use in the taillight as well as the shape of where it illuminates. And the wing built into the duck bill of the trunk is pretty cute too. If there was an award for the strangest reverse light on a car, the A90 Supra hands down would win. And also either this car runs super lean or they have some kind of magical coating on these exhaust tips because it's been almost a week and they are still clean. If I had a dollar for every time I heard someone say the new Supra is just a BMW, I would have a new Supra. I don't understand the criticism. BMW has made some of the greatest inline six engines in history. The S54, the N54, and now the B58. They're bulletproof proven engines. I think it's great when two car companies get together and collaborate and build something like this. I mean, the Pagani Huayra technically has an AMG engine in it, but people don't go, ugh, it's just a Mercedes. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you feel about automotive collaborations, good or bad? If you're wondering what the GR stands for, it actually does not stand for Gazoo Racing, it stands for GRR. As far as the interior goes, you guys know how I roll. I'm gonna keep this short, sweet, and to the simple and point out to you my physical observations from sitting inside this thing, starting with none other than these 14-way adjustable seats. They are heated, but not ventilated, and there's a button down here on the side to adjust the bolstering, which, it's solid. The bolstering on these seats is on point. This is great. A lot of the reviews I've read on the A90 Supra have pointed out the fact that there are multiple buttons and components on the interior that are shared with other BMW products. However, for someone like myself and most consumers shopping for a Supra who don't sit in multiple BMWs per year, you're not gonna pick up on that. When I first jumped in this thing, the first thing I noticed was the dash and the vents right across the center and the hazard button. To me, that stood out as Toyota. But the chime when you hop in here is unmistakably BMW. And the super confusing infotainment system. I'm sorry, but it took me forever to figure this thing out. It is kind of confusing to get used to. There is quite a bit packed into this 8.8 .8 inch display on your screen that you can control with this little Kanabi here in the center, but you have to be mildly intelligent to figure out how to extract it from inside there, which I apparently am not. Absolutely love the heads up display in here and how well it integrates with your infotainment system. It's full color and it allows you to see your entire station menu for satellite radio so you can select something to listen to on the windshield without ever having to look over. As far as the back seat goes, there isn't one. I'm sitting in the hatch because I'm weird. But there's enough room back here for all of my camera gear, my tripod, and my backpack, and me. 
So that's usable. Aside from the fact that they used real carbon fiber in the center console right here and of some fake plastic crap that looks like carbon, and I swear if this is actually fake and not real, I'm gonna feel like a huge tool bag right now. I'm pretty damn sure that's real. Other than that, there's nothing really in the interior material-wise that stands out as over-the-top impressive. It's pretty basic in here. And the steering wheel, I'm kind of weird that there's no pass-through in the bottom center here. It's just filled in with black plastic. The car is equipped with wireless charging for your smartphone down here in the center, and there's this little plastic tray up above it that will hold your phone in place so when you give it hell, it doesn't come flying out and shish-kebab your passenger. That was graphic. I never get tired of taking this thing for a rip. It's fun every single time. All right. I just scared a bird over there. I'm sorry, bird. Now this does have an active exhaust system on it. So when you put it in sport mode, it opens up some baffles and makes it a little bit louder and snarly back there. and it has a burble tune from the factory, so it burps and farts when it shifts. It's rude. In the name of science, I shall now give it the beans. I'm going to keep it in sport mode because I already have it in sport mode. And I'm going to tap traction control, which puts it into sport traction. And this does have launch control. It may or may not be utilized. All right, let's let it eat. Ready? Garage Science with Sarah. It is no secret that what is sitting underneath the hood of this car right now is sourced from BMW. Yes, it is the B58 M30C, all aluminum, three liter, straight six, that produces 335 horsepower from 5,000 to 6,500 RPM and 365 pound feet of torque from 1,600 to 4,500 RPM. And I happen to think they're being a little conservative with their power figures because the butt dyno says that thing's a little bit quicker than those numbers. There's no point in me diving any deeper into the engine on this thing because the channel Papadakis Racing actually did a very detailed video series on this engine. They completely tore it down and analyzed everything. So if you wanna learn more about the Supra's engine, definitely recommend checking out their YouTube channel. The transmission that is found in this car is a ZF8HP 8-speed automatic transmission. There is no manual transmission currently available for this platform, and I do think they should make it an option eventually. I'm pretty sure they will, but I still think I'd choose the ZF8 speed. I love the farts that this thing produces when it bangs off gears, and if you're gonna drive this thing on a track, can't go wrong with ZF8 speed. It's a phenomenal transmission. It also is paired to an active rear diff with a 3.154 final dry ratio. I've noticed what made this car so good on the track turns into a slight butt pucker factor on a back road. This car is twitchy.
understand why anyone would buy one of these and do anything other than use it for track days and drifting, drag racing. Why? This thing is phenomenal as a track car. If you guys have never seen one of my car reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess vehicles, starting with the coveted bean score. It's a rating of one to five beans based on the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And this 2020 Toyota Supra is going to get a rating of three beans. But what I'm even more excited for is the 2021 model has even more power, a big bump in power. I cannot wait to see how fast that thing is. Next is the cookie category. It is a rating of value, what you spend for what you get on a rating of one to five cookies. And this A90 Supra is getting a rating of 2.75 cookies. It's really hard to do with your hands. That's what he, never mind. The car is getting above average because of performance. However, nothing really blows me away with the features and materials on the interior and it's got fake vents on the outside. So a little bit above average because it does cost over $50,000. Lastly is the Penguin score. It is a rating of how I personally like a vehicle. And out of all the car reviews I've done in the past two years, there's only two in my mind that I feel are worthy of the top rating. This 2020 A90 Supra is getting a rating of five penguins. It's not a perfect car by any means, but I absolutely love this thing. It has character. I love the styling of it. And it's everything I personally would be looking for in a car. If it was financially feasible, I would go out and buy one of these today. Actually, I would wait and get the 2021 model just because I like that A91 edition. It's blue with the little black stripes on there and the little winglet. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like this car that much. It really did impress me. And anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you soon with another. Bye.